Hey guys, this is Post Production Pi with SRLounge.com. All right, so let's move on to the metadata panel. We're going to hit Control 4 or Command 4 on a Mac to expand that panel. And starting from the top, it shows us our different views. And this is defaulted to this default view right here. The different views are going to give you different options as to what metadata you want to be able to see and edit. So default is kind of the, the most common one, and that's why it is the default, because it's going to give you basically a summary of kind of the most important metadata information uh, that you have on your image. And so what we see at the top is if we have a preset applied to it, we'll see that preset. And you guys should actually remember that previously we taught you guys how to set up a metadata preset, and then we applied that preset on import. So actually every single one of our images is going to have that exact same SR Lounge generic metadata preset. Now next we have the file name. This next little grouping right here is basically all just uh, file system metadata bits. So we have the name, we have sidecar files, copy name, folder, and status. Below that we have some uh, copyright and, and informational metadata. So this is title, caption, we have our copyright, copyright status, creator, and sublocation. Then we have attributes such as a rating, any labels that we've had applied to it, and then below this is EXIF data. So this is information on when the image was captured and exactly how it was captured, what kind of camera was used, what dimensions were used. Now if we want a different grouping of information, we just go back up to the top and we select a different grouping. So for example, if we want to see all of the EXIF data or all of the camera data on how this image was shot, we just select EXIF. This is another really useful metadata view because it shows every bit of information as far as how that image was shot, at least what was all recorded. So from this view, we can see that the flash didn't fire for this image, that it was shot on manual, that we shot at 120 millimeter focal length, what the exposure was set at, and so forth. And so it's really nice moving through images just to see how those images were exposed and how we shot them and when they were shot and so on. So the next really useful metadata information tab is this IPTC. And IPTC is basically where it shows all the standard metadata information uh, that you can enter in for basically your image. It's not all of it, but it's the majority of what you want to use. So we have contact information, content information, image information. It's all very self-explanatory. Most of the time I'm only using contact and copyright. So those are the two most useful areas which are actually visible, at least the copyright is visible from the default view. All these different modes basically give you different views of different types of metadata. If we're shooting video, we actually have a metadata view for video. So let's go down to that video file. We can click metadata video. And now we can see basically the EXIF information right here, which was the duration, the video frame rate, the dimensions and everything like that, the audio sampling rate. And we can type in a bunch of different you know, video metadata that would be helpful to us in future programs and maybe editing and stuff like that. So we don't need to go through every single one of these. It'll get a little bit redundant if we do. They're very simple. If you guys have any questions, just look through them. Default is a great view to leave it on because it gives you a little bit of everything and it lets you just kind of quickly glance through it, add in some copyright stuff. And once again, when you're importing, use those import presets to add in the basic metadata so you don't have to type those in over every single image. Now, since we're on metadata, I'm also going to show you guys how to sync metadata. So let's go through the top. I'm going to select an image and we're going to add something. So let's add like a title to this image and we're going to say the LR4 Toot Series Exercise Files. Okay, so now I've added that to this image, but it's not added on any other image metadata. So I only have the title on this one. If I want to sync them, all I got to do is make a selection. So I can use Control to select groupings that are out of order, or I can use Shift to select a grouping that's in order. So I'm going to hit Shift and we're going to select this first 10 like we always do. And you can see that certain items like the file name and sidecar files, they're going to show up as mixed. And what that means is, is that there is no one single definition or one single metadata information that's matching across all of these images for those specific bits of info for the file name. And we don't really want the file name to be all the same. A lot of these you won't want to be the same. But what we might want is we might want them to all share the same title or maybe share the same sublocation or whatever we want and maybe the same caption. So let's type in something. We're going to type in right here, caption, and we're going to put in uh, shot by Lynn and Jirsa Photography. We can put in whatever we want. Since all these are selected and I'm editing it in all of them right now, it's going to add that to actually every single one of the images. And it's going to ask me, do you want to apply the meta change to all the selected photos? And I'm going to say apply to selected. Now it's basically syncing and applying that metadata status to all these images. But what if we have something entered in on one image and I don't want to enter it in and type it in again? Well, what I can do is select that one image. So just like we did, I'm going to do it one more time. 
uh, we have this one image, it has the title right here, and we're going to select those 10 images. And this image is the highlighted image. Notice that, because that's the image that's going to be synced across the rest of them. You see how the shade is a little bit different between these selections? So we know that this is the image that will be synced across. So now what we're going to do is go down to Sync Metadata, and all we have to do is check off the right options. So for the options, we have IPTC copyright and creator already selected. These were the basics that we had in our import preset that we created. Now under IPTC status, we will have our title information. And so to sync that, all we got to do is select this checkbox right here. And so if we actually check it from this IPT status right here, it's going to check off all these items and we don't necessarily want it to sync all those items. So the easy way to do it is to check off specific components that you do want it to sync. So we're going to check this one off and then we're going to hit synchronize. And what it does is synchronize all those. Now we can see that the title is no longer mixed. It now shows LR4 two series exercise files across all these images. So let's do that one more time. And we're going to actually apply this title to every single image that we have. And uh, we're going to select all by hitting Control A or Command A. We're going to do this one more time and hit Sync Metadata. We're going to go to the IPT status and make sure that this is checked. We're going to hit Synchronize. And now all of our images have the LR4 two series exercise files title attached to them. Now I'm going to hit Control D or Command D on a Mac to deselect everything. And the last thing I want to go over is the sync settings. Now with these are syncing develop settings on these images, whereas the left one is syncing only the metadata. So if we want to sync develop settings, it works almost the exact same way. We just make a selection. I'm going to hold Shift. We'll select our first five images. We go down and we click Sync Settings. And now we can choose which settings we're going to sync. Now we're going to cover this in more detail in the develop module because that's where you're going to do the majority of your syncing. But it's good to know that you can actually do it from the li library module as well. So for right now, I'm going to hit cancel. We're going to jump out of that. And then we're going to close up our metadata panel by hitting control four or command four on a Mac. I'm now going to hit control five to open up our comments panel. And we'll notice that this service is not supported right now because we're not in published services. You guys will remember that we actually set up published services to work with Facebook. Well, when we go to that Facebook Public Services account, we can actually see what's been published. And if we have anything that's been published, we can see the comments as well as reply to comments here in this library menu right here. So we can actually reply directly to Facebook from Lightroom, which is a really cool feature. But that is something that we went through previously. We're not going to spend too much time on it now. If you have any questions on the comment system or on public services, be sure to check out the previous uh, tutorial where we actually went over the published services in detail and we set up our Facebook account. All right, so I'm going to jump back to my originals. We have covered this right side panel, and now we're going to move on to the film strip.